Hi, Gabriel here from the New York City Guitar School and today I'm going to talk about something that might seem a little mundane but it's probably something that's worth thinking about and that is guitar picks. Guitar picks are the uh, starting point of your guitar sound and they can totally alter how your guitar playing sounds. Um, they come in various sizes, different shapes, different thicknesses, different materials and each different variable is going to change the sound your guitar makes. So today I'm going to take a little uh, sweep through the different styles, um, the different uh, choices you have when it comes to choosing the pick that you want to use and what that means. I'm also going to throw in a couple of quick tips about holding a pick and different ways we can approach this that can get some different sounds that you might not have uh, thought about doing before. So let's start off and talk about uh, the first thing and that is the thickness of the pick. Now this is probably the biggest effect of the sound uh, that we're going to get. Um, picks can vary in thickness, they can come as thin as you know half a millimeter um, all the way up to two or three millimeters thick. Um, here I've got a selection varying between uh, 0.6 millimeters and two millimeters and varying different materials. So that's the other thing. Traditionally picks were made from organic materials. Um, what was heralded as like the, the ultimate sound was uh, tortoise shell, which is awful. You shouldn't kill animals for that. But um, nowadays we have synthetic uh, recreations or some are also made from uh, animal byproducts. Um, from agriculture, so I have the, an example here from that too. And right here I have a range of one of the cheapest picks, um, all the way up to a couple of uh, what we would call the like boutique custom picks. So let's let's take a look at these. So we have a couple of different brands here. The predominant brand brand that you'll see a lot of people using is Jim Dunlop, and I have a few uh, by by that company. We have these this Altex material, and I've got a few. I've got this in pretty much every gauge. I've been experimenting um, with different thicknesses of this. You can also get it by different brands. I have a Planet Waves uh, Altex pick. They call it Altum. It's still the same material. And it's it's basically like a spacecraft grade material. It's very slippery, uh, not grippy. It grips well on your fingers, but it slips through the strings very nicely. It doesn't drag and it is very high durability. So for thin picks, they tend to wear out pretty quickly. Altum's a cool one to check out. The next material that if you think of Jim Dunlop, you're probably gonna think of these picks, that's Tortex material. This is the um, synthetic plastic that is gonna feel like tortoiseshell, I guess. Um, it's got a matte finish to it. Not as heavy duty as uh, the Altex Altum material. So it wears out a little bit faster, but it's got a slightly warmer sound because of that. You can get that in various thicknesses, different sizes. I actually have that in something called a jazz size pick, which is just a reduced size and standard sizes. We also have uh, this flow size, which is kind of between the two. It's a bit smaller than a normal pick, but not small as a jazz size. Uh, the other main uh, manufacturer that you'll hear about when it comes to guitar picks is Fender, the guitar company. And I have a one of their classic uh, celluloid picks. So. Um, after tortoiseshell kind of fell from popularity, one of the big um, synthetic plastics that was really popular was this material called celluloid. Kind of like um, what old film uh, used to be on. And if you know anything about uh, old film, celluloid is super flammable. So, uh, no idea if this is super flammable, but I've not tried, I don't really want to. But uh, <laughs> celluloid picks are softer again than tor uh, Tortex. So one of the softer materials and uh, very warm sounding, they wear out quite quickly. Uh, they come in a range of thicknesses. I have them in the heavy, heavy gauge here, but I've also used extra heavy. I have uh, some Planet Waves extra heavy cellulite picks and they're really cool too. Then we have a Dun Dunlop Prime Tone pick here. This is a uh, hand beveled pick. It's made from the Altex material again, um, but now it's got beveled edges because we're starting to get into the boutique style pick now where we have uh, rounded ed edges to our picks and we're aiming for durability and uh, craftsmanship. That brings us into the last two picks I've got here. This is a timber tone buffalo horn pick. It's made from uh, animal byproducts so they're not hunting down buffalo to make guitar picks from them. They were, they were you know, discarded material. Um, very hard, very, very hard, no flex at whatsoever, um, but also very soft, so it wears down pretty quickly. Very warm sounding. And then lastly, we have a Red Bear pick. This is made from Sazine, which is like a milk uh, protein that is reactive with chemicals. 
Again, it's not vegan, but it is biodegradable, which is a nice thing about uh, saving picks. Somewhere between uh, traditional plastics and the horn in terms of feeling. In fact, if I hold the two picks together, there, you can see they look the, this is the horn, the buffalo horn, and this is the uh, saising. They look very similar. Okay, now, all these picks have a very different sound, um, and we're going to go over a few different things we can think about um, to differentiate them. The first thing is, I'm going to show you a trick um, that we can use to give us a general idea of what a pick is going to sound like. So, if we take our picks, I'm going to take a thinner pick to start with, and what you can do, if you drop it on a hard surface, I'm going to compare that now to, a, this is a 2mm pick. Can you hear the difference between those two? So this is the first one, this is the Altex 0.6. Doesn't really make that much sound, sounds kind of like plingy. Plingy, is that a word? Not very resonant, Let's compare it to the 2mm pick. Strong, fundamental, very loud, and it has a lot of bounce to it, if you watch it bouncing. It's like a poker chip. This one doesn't really bounce, it falls flat. Same thing goes, this is a 1.4 Tortex pick. Similar between the two, you would think that because it's similar between the two in thickness. This is a 0.7, somewhere between this, uh, again. So that's a really good way um, to test what we think the picks might sound like when we use them on the guitar. If you drop it, you can kind of get an idea of what the pick's going to sound like. Now this is what I do if I'm trying out different picks and I just want to experiment, see what the sound's going to be like. I'll kind of drop it first on the hard surface so I kind of know what to expect. Okay, so let's try to demonstrate this a little bit. I'm going to play through a couple of different guitar picks now. Um, I'm just going to use a clean sound on both pickups on my guitar. That's my thumb. Thumb is very soft, very warm sounding. Now, I'm going to use the hardest pick I have here. Um, the thick picks, strong bass, strong fundamental, but you may notice, if I mute the guitar, you get like a percussive sound as the pick hits the strings, because it's hard, hard plastic, but loud acoustically. They're great for lead lines. Really cool for that, um, but not great for strumming. Okay, let's go to the other end of the spectrum. I'm going to use my thinnest pick. This is a 0.6. Very little noise as it hits the strings. Bright sound, less bass, um, less fundamental, lots of upper treble, upper mids. But great for strumming. Bright sound for the um, single night lines, and I can feel there's a lot of flex when I'm picking. Okay, so somewhere in, the, in the between, if I use like the Fender Heavy, it's basically literally what you would expect. It's halfway between the two. It's strong fundamental, but a pretty balanced sound, and works well for strumming. But you can experiment. Some people prefer different things. Um, I actually personally use thin picks, but this is where we come into another tip. I don't hold the pick in a traditional way. I actually hold the pick sideways. So if we think about how you would typically hold a guitar pick, we would hold it with the point facing down like so. And our thumb would be across it, and our index finger at a 45 degree angle with our thumb to provide us with a grip and just a little bit of uh, the tip of the pick will be pointing out. That is the traditional grip for holding a pick. Now, you can get a warmer sound out of these traditional picks by using the rounded edge like this. So the rounded edge pointing down, you can see it's a wider base for the uh, pick to strike the strings. And this is actually my preferred picking method. I'm using these thin picks, the rounded edge hit the strings. So listen to how that sounds. So if I'm using the rounded edge on my guitar, it sounds like this. So you get the brightness of the thin pick, the snappiness, but you're also being uh, greeted by a warm sound from the rounded edge. 
Now lots of uh, well-known guitarists hold their picks like this. Um, Pat Metheny is known for doing that. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, The Edge, all use this rounded edge of the pick. It has a nice benefit of being warmer sounding. It's actually a little easier, in my opinion, to cross the strings with the rounded edge because it doesn't get dug in as much. However, if you're playing more aggressive styles, it's not great for uh, pinched harmonics because it's pretty hard to get the string to pop up and you may find it uh, a little bit more awkward for strumming just because it's a wider point. So hopefully this is useful. Uh, it's worthwhile thinking about these kinds of things because often something as small as a guitar pick is easy to overlook. So you can really experiment with the different variances and sound you can get and it's a nice, nice thing to do. Um, to experiment with because it's an affordable way of changing your sound. It's not like buying a pedal or an amplifier or a new guitar where they're going to be you know, hundreds of, or thousands of dollars. Uh, this guitar pick cost me 50 cents and it changed my sound drastically. So I would definitely recommend um, trying out different guitar picks and seeing which one you like the uh, sound and feel of the most. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Uh, my name is Gabriel. I'm a guitar teacher at the New York City Guitar School. We offer group lessons, one-on-one -on -one lessons, uh, in both guitar, bass, ukulele, vocals, and music production. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell icon to receive notifications every time we upload a video. We've been posting lots of content recently, um, so hopefully you'll want to check that out. If you made it this far for the video, hit that like button. Um, it means a lot. Once again, thank you so much for checking out this video, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one.